screen. And we're live. <laughs> Uh, well, you know. Coming to you live from the subarctic, <laughs> Michael was trying to counter fuck me, but it didn't work. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am in the cabin in the sky in Las Vegas, where it will now go up to plus 100 degrees, even though recently it's been lower. Next week, they promise us in the 80s here in Vegas, which is a beautiful temperature. Oh, geez. Yeah. 80 in Vegas is a really nice. Uh, that's that's OK. That's tolerable for uh, those who are uh, uh, cold blooded. I uh, have a tendency to uh, melt 50 degrees this morning and my dog panted during the whole walk because she was <laughs> she was too hot. Uh, however, this week, this week, the first time this year, we're going to get below freezing. So Thursday, it's it's a uh, it's spring temperature down to 31 as a low, <laughs> as a low. Pretty soon we're going to be. Uh, uh, the high temperature will be below freezing, and then it will always be that way for the rest of the year and well into next year. So, so that's just when, uh, uh, how it is. I haven't looked at it to see you're going to be here in Vegas in just a couple of weeks, and I don't even know what the temperature is going to be here when you arrive. So I expect, let me type in the header might, here. Yeah, you <clears> might actually be uh, frosty the snowman where all I see is a hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's see. What do we call this one? Making... That's all for while he's doing that for the people that are online right now. Is I was telling Craig that if you look over his shoulder on his whiteboard, he's got Andy Weir for 2020. And he had like J.K. Rowling and others. And I said what he should actually do is put the, the like J.K. Rowling, mark it out, Andy Weir, mark it out. And then, you know, who else is he trying to accomplish? <clears throat> Chuck Tingle. Chuck, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going through our keywords, keywords that uh, – Apparently, I paid money for. And so, you know, on your Amazon ads, you have these broad and phrase and direct and everything. And, and something was in our broad match that we were actually getting people typing in Chuck Tingle stuff to come up for our books. And I'm just like, I'm like, really? Seriously? No, do not, you know. <laughs> they might Tingle be disappointed. Yeah, they, they, will, they will be. No, I was going to no, say, what if they're not? No, and it's. <laughs> or but about it, they will be disappointed. <laughs> I love that, man. That's a score right there. Yeah, it, I a, know, right? That's a freaking bullseye. <clears throat> right in the 20 eye hole. Um, <laughs> so, All right. So, all right. What we're talking about today is uh, uh, making a conference work for you. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about uh, 20 Books of Vegas, but this is about any conference. And uh, as Michael and I were talking before we, we went live, uh, it, it, without all the swear words, was uh, about how you invest in yourself. What is the best way to invest? What uh, can you plan to get out of a conference? Uh, what can you expect from a conference? What can you expect for, from yourself during a conference? There's a number of, uh, of things and, uh, and methods and tips and tricks and planning tools to help you. Uh, Michael actually put together a list. I, I I actually wrote the name of the conference on my whiteboard, uh, the name of the uh, episode on my whiteboard. So there's two different approaches to to how we're going to talk about this. So uh, okay. So to be fair, the only reason I did this is that I usually wing it, and I've been like, okay, I'm not really doing a really good job here. I I, did, I need to go make sure I get the basics in here because you know I always consider that I have the information, but I don't consider that when I'm asked and I'm in the middle of filming something that I provide the best information. I thought I would be a little bit more prepared this time. So <laughs> from this is from the Harvard Business Review by Dana Rousman Nuri, man, 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 uh, very, very European. Anyway, <laughs> so what we're going to do is I, I pulled out some of the things that I felt were important, but we're also, this isn't just any conferences. Craig wants me to talk also about like the London Book Fair and the New York Book Fair and the Beijing Book Fair and and uh, the Frankfurt Book Fair, which is coming up just in one month. And we'll see everybody that is going to go over there. We'll be over there as well. Anyways, you know, what do we was LBP and why do we want to do this? And so Craig's comment, uh, comment was there. But one thing is, I do think before I get into those, Craig, let's talk about why would you want to do it? Why even a conference in the first place, whether it's one of the book fairs or 20 books conference or something local, why would anyone want to do one? What's the purpose? Or multiple. <clears throat> I, I, I think uh, multiple purposes. I think any relationships you make at conferences, especially conferences with other indie authors, as well as traditionally published authors, because understand that authors are all trying to target readers. 
So just find out what's going on. So being at a conference that's all indies is cool. Being at a conference that's all trad is cool. Being at mixed conferences is cool because you're trying to get certain things from those. So uh, <clears throat> it's, it's your finger on the pulse, which you can't necessarily do online. Uh, it's it's being aware. It's seeing body uh, body language. It's uh, talking to people personally with follow up questions after a presentation, and and those kinds of things that you really can only do in person to make sure you understood one hundred percent of what they were talking about. Yeah. So some of the things that are you know, indie twenty books predominantly indie. Although we certainly have trad people coming into indie, but here's a couple of conferences that are both mixed trad pub and indie. And that would be both Nink, which you want to speak to Nink for a minute? I haven't been to Nink. But you're, you knew about it. We just, okay, this is what he does to me. He just talked about some of the requirements to get to Nink right before he hits live. And now he's like, I've never been. I, 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 I know nothing about that. No, Nink, <laughs> Nink is a, a professional organization. It's Novelist Nink. Nink. <clears throat> and uh, the... Uh, uh, there is a barrier to entry. You have to demonstrate a certain amount of sales of a, of, of a single book in a, within a uh, certain time frame. There's an annual due because it's a professional organization. <clears throat> and they have a monthly newsletter and they have a, a forum and they have uh, the, the annual conference is really the big, their big deal. They have It's in St. Petersburg, Florida. The trade wins every year. It's uh, where people get together and the authors that go say uh, probably more than 50 percent of why they go is for the after hours events and it's not it's not the drinking but it's the collaboration it's part the, of the drinking well, it's, <laughs> it's drinking on a beach um <clears throat> it, it's a, a meeting with their fellow authors that they might only see once a year so uh, there's mm -hmm. some authors that this is the only event they go to and that's also important because now uh, where else would you hear from like amanda lee so that's the one she goes to so you go there and and, and uh, uh pick her brain or just listen uh, there's uh, industry is well represented there. Uh, I, I'm happy to mm -hmm. say that industry is well represented in uh, in Vegas too. Uh, we have pretty much uh, almost everybody who who goes to Nink is uh, going to be at Vegas, and then some additional folks. So uh, uh, we're trying to fill that gap and that void for those folks who didn't uh, get that uh, past that certain threshold. We have 200 people coming to Vegas who uh, either have one book or no books published. So uh, you can't get into Nink. But you can come to Vegas, you can learn, you can uh, start upping your game and start that uh, climb in the mountain. Yeah, absolutely. So Nink um, is one of them. But the other one is Kevin J. Anderson's Superstars Writing Conference. It is held in Colorado Springs. I believe it is in February. I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think their lowest pricing is still good to the end of September, maybe. So yeah. do check that out. But that Kevin J. Anderson, if you don't know who he is, uh, I'm shocked. But if you happen to not know, he is an individual who's been on, you know, multiple uh, New York Times bestseller. He writes quite a few of the Star Wars books. Um, I think he's been on it simultaneously and maybe the only New York Times bestseller that did a book with. And I forget what what um, oh, it, it's got a very unique way that he, he hit it on multiple times anyway. Uh, Kevin, since he comes from the Trad Pub, he built the seminar along with his wife, Rebecca, who is also a New York Times bestseller, Rebecca Mesta, um, from the Trad Pub side. But over the years, he had seen the indie evolution and he had made it a little bit more indie friendly. Well, in the last couple, three years, it's uh, a lot of indies have come there because it, uh, the Kevin, the Superstars is a writing conference. It's not only about business, which 20 books is predominantly business, but um, also, you know, what's the craft? And he brings like, I got a chance to meet Jim Butcher last year and, and have lunch with him and uh, his son and, and others. And so there were some really interesting people that you would probably only get to meet if you were on the trad pub side. And so that was an opportunity uh, as well. So anyway, that happens. It's in Florida, or excuse me, it's in Colorado Springs in February, There's, I believe. Uh, we can take a look at it, but you know, that's another one that you can mix both sides. And why would you want to do it? Imagine if you will, um, I, I didn't, you know, because I'm poor at this. Maybe I should listen to this after, uh, after we get done. I didn't go up and to ask Jim anything about trying to get a blurb from him. You know, I was just like, but had I had the cojones to actually do that, might've had an opportunity to get something from Jim Butcher to put on any of our urban fantasy books. There you go. Plus the man likes Coke. So <laughs> he's, he's a God in my books. Um, but anyway, that was yeah. another one. And then so we can talk to, do you have, I'm just, um, 
I don't remember if you've done any other conferences besides the ones we've been in Austin and Vegas and, of course, around the world for 20 books. But have you been to any of the others? <clears throat> I, I went to uh, ICON in Iowa, the Iowa convention, uh, of uh, the biggest science fiction convention in Iowa. And it was extremely limited. I went because it was sponsored by Joe, Joe and Gay Haldeman. Mm -hmm. And so I got to meet them a couple times and, and talk with them there. But uh, it, just their guests, especially in this year, they changed the date. It was in September, but they changed it up into uh, November. It's the week before uh, 20 books. And their biggest, uh, their big name right now is uh, 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 nowhere near uh, me, I should say. So <laughs> if, if I went, I would be their biggest name by about 10 times. Uh, so uh, I'm not going. <clears throat> and and uh, there are some that you go to that you can get something out of or that you don't. I go to GaryCon. I do write uh, in the uh, role play gaming uh, genre as one of them, as well as some game uh, supplements and things just as a side gig. So uh, I go there and I, I meet and greet. I do have uh, I do know some of the major players and that uh, I, I think can always be important and always uh, benefit somebody, at, which you can only do in person. Uh, I, none of that happened until I started going to Gary Khan and meeting these folks and talking with them and then actually showing them, hey, I wrote a book on this topic. I wrote a book about uh, that was inspired by your game. And then they read and they're like, holy cow, uh, you can write. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I like it. Uh, let's uh, let's write another one. <clears throat> and uh, so those things don't happen if you don't go in person, because especially especially when you're dealing with older folks. And this is me. I'm I'm 56. Talking about when you meet older older people, oh, some dear. some of those uh, they're still uh, tied to trad pub thought and the innovation. They they get excited about innovation because they don't hear it because they're in a in a tunnel, they're in a That's in a true. stove pipe. And you say, hey, no, I've uh, I, I sold I sold a thousand books this week, and they're like, what the hell are you talking? Thousand books? Yes. And and here's what we're doing to do that. So how can we work with each other? Like licensing, I know Michael has worked on uh, some licensing agreements, but that stuff doesn't happen unless you meet these people and can talk to them and convince them that yes, this is viable or just that you are viable as an author or that you appreciate their work as an author because authors love hearing that, that, hey, I've read your book and I like it. Not so I read your book <laughs> and, and then that silence that follows and you just want to die. <laughs> so, uh, we, so don't do that to them. Say, hey, I read, I love your books. That's good enough. Or, or man, those books really, they, they, they uh, reach me in a way books usually don't or things like that. They, they, that goes a long ways towards motivating authors. Uh, so, uh, and, and doing that in person is important. Otherwise you could come across as a creepy stalker. You never know uh, how, how misery uh, uh, came about, but it's probably real. <laughs> it, it's uh yeah so i i can't name the name um but i was at worldcon and i had chosen to go to worldcon this year because edinburgh was two weeks from it i had been in the states and i had made the misunderstanding of someone telling me that um that worldcon was like in the states and then somewhere else and then in the states and then in somewhere else and for whatever reason i understood that it was like over there they wherever there is and here and so uh, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do both. I've done the one here in the States. I'll do the one overseas and then I'm going to not go. Right. Because um, I, I do way too many conferences. So uh, but in there, I, I it was uh, half work, half just kind of figuring out what was going on. And there was a role playing game event, uh, a talk, a table. What do they call them? Panel. And so at the panel, I thought, you know, I got myself out of bed. Jet lag was horrible, but I got myself out of bed and I went over to it. It was 1030 in the morning and I might get a chance to, to work with one of the best known role playing game companies probably in the world, at least historically. Um, I had thought maybe he uh, blew me off. He did not. In fact, I'm looking at an email he sent on August 29th, which I apparently blew him off because I didn't see it. I never saw it. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> It's seven. It's September 14. Yeah, God. I'm like, I cannot believe I did this. So I, I just, as Craig is talking, I'm typing a message. Oh my goodness. I didn't see this. I will have, I will be back in 72 hours. I promise. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, this is not going to go well. Anyway, I tried. Um, I hope he forgives me. I really, really hope he forgives me. In fact, I might take this video and cut this piece out and send it to him. 
This is my apology. I'm yes. sorry. I just saw it and I, I answered while live That's because right. I was so distraught about not answering when I wasn't live. Yes. <laughs> I know. I've been waiting for this email for weeks, and it's been sitting in my email inbox. Yeah. So as another item that's related to this, make sure you freaking pay attention to your emails. And if your email doesn't exhibit it, maybe search for it, because that's what I did. I searched. Has this person... Oh, oh, maybe it's going to show me the emails I sent him, the, the, the many emails. I know you might not have... <laughs> and that's not what I did. I did two. Just did two. <laughs> But um, yeah, and don't don't stalk people on emails after conferences. That's another just not a good thing. Misery. But anyway, how, how he's did there. You, uh, how did he have your email? Or uh, how I, did I, you get his email? So what happened is during the conference, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this panel. There was, there was like five, five people up on the panel. And they were talking about the early days of gaming and what it was like to have these conferences. And there was one cisgendered individual who was hilarious as hell. So I've never, I had never met this person in my life. I didn't know anything about this individual. And uh, she, he, I'm not sure how that goes. Um, but anyway, they're up on stage and they're talking. And so is the individual I'm talking to. Well, two things out of this. One of them was this individual says, we did a, um, uh, a poll of our readers. And of the polls of our readers, we asked them, what, you know, what did they do with the modules that they buy of our games? And a large percentage of them just read them. That's it. Just read. I mean, do you do that? You're a big gamer. Mm -hmm. So you do you buy but modules just to read them? I, I have always lived separate from other gamers. There's very few times where I was in, with, with a group. So generally, I do exactly that. I buy the modules and I just read them. Interesting. So I fall in that category. I And, and I have collections, too, which is important if you're a gamer. You have a complete series of the modules, like Gamma World. I have them all. I had to go on eBay and pay a ridiculous amount for the last couple that I was missing. Yeah, but really? I did, and and what's I ridiculous yeah, I have amount? A, what's a ridiculous amount? Like fifty bucks for a torn up, nasty, shredded dog pee version. Oh, okay. Didn't need to know that last part. <laughs> that was a, no. Use your other words. The other words, Martel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so fifty bucks. So it's not it's not horrible, but yeah, if it no. was that bad. Just to but have I, a complete collection. I, I had uh, original D and D in the not the brown, the first white box, and I was trying to clean out, and I, I sold it uh, ten years ago for like five hundred dollars. Uh, the Ooh. same set nowadays is uh, is thousands. If I was looking to replace it, so I didn't. I actually just bought the PDF of the original <laughs> originals instead. A drive through RPG. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, this is not the RPG event. Um, we should no. probably go into that sometime. Anyway, going back to where the hell? Oh, the story. So what happened is when he mentioned this, there was a marketing. Remember, folks, that I'm also, you know, I'm predominantly a publisher at this point. You know, LMBPN. I do a lot of, of beach writing, character creation, and other things that that we do around here. But also, I'm very much in my publishing mind all the time, and so. After the event, when everybody is kind of getting up and a few people are heading to the front to speak to, you know, whoever's their hero up there, uh, I'm making my way up. I'm trying to, you know, s swim upstream as well. And, you know, geeks, get out of the way. Fuck, that's all of us. You know, so <laughs> so I make myself up there and, and the gentleman is is talking with someone. So I wait patiently and I ask him when he goes, I said, you mentioned this situation where you did this poll. And he goes, yeah, yeah, that's very true. I said, what have you guys done about that? And he goes, nothing. We're a game company. And I'm like, can I please talk to you for a few minutes? <laughs> so I pitched him right there. I mean, I, I was not letting this one get out of out of there. So I pitched him. I hit him. Um, and he, he was kind enough. And I pulled up, I think, my, my iPad or something to show him the company, show him the amount of books that we had. And that caused him to turn around because all of a sudden I wasn't just somebody out in the crowd where he's spoken many a times. Yeah. I'm a legit publisher who's got hundreds of books underneath what's going on he sees the quality of the covers he sees yeah. you know the reviews and i'm like here's my ranking and it's like oh so yeah. i was able to get five minutes of his time and then a business card and that's it he needed to go so i was like thank you very much i'm out of here my life this world con has been successful yep, yep. <laughs> you know and and that and that's uh the goal of meeting one new person uh, of at a conference is something that everybody should always have. And, and you think, well, hey, there was thousand with 7,000 people at Worldcon. And you think all I have to do is meet one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that could be a challenge. You go to DragonCon. 
I went to Dragon Con. Ninety thousand people. <laughs> oh, yeah, ninety thousand. If you're if you're undercounting, it's it's just well, that's in within one block. If you stretch it out two blocks, it's like a billion. <laughs> <clears throat> not this um, is coming guys this is coming from an gentleman who thinks five people in five square miles is a lot of people it's 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 fairly dense and and we can move uh, if need be the uh <laughs> but meeting one person like dragon i went to dragon con it's really and good. i got to meet like like three or four people and that's it i i uh, didn't hang uh, out with anybody because there's so many damn people Getting solo time and getting uh, say even even if it's like hey I'm I'm Craig Martell I'm a top 100 sci-fi author for last two and a half years and uh, here's my card just want to say hi appreciate your books thank you well who uh, did you meet at that event I got I to remember. meet uh, David Weber I got to meet Kevin J Anderson that mm -hmm. was the first time I talked to him and he's like oh yeah I want to talk to you and that's uh, when you introduce yourself and somebody uh, like Kevin says I want to talk to you that's cool <laughs> I got like a half hour 45 minutes of his time. I did spend time talking with Chris Kennedy, and that was mm -hmm. the first time I, I uh, spent uh, talking with him in person. So uh, uh, him and, and and his group, as well as uh, Aileron Kong, got to meet him very mm -hmm. briefly. And who else? Uh, Is it Aileron? I thought it was Aileron. Aileron. I, 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 I will butcher it. It's okay. Uh, just Not if you're him, but I mean, uh, 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 <laughs> hey, you can't do worse than what I did when I assumed when he told me. <laughs> so uh, another side story real quick. <laughs> yeah. So um, I had passed waves, if you will, with Alaron uh, on Facebook. And, and this is before I got into Lit RPG. I was watching everything for a year and a half, two years. And uh, I just could not understand what the hell was the definitive definition of of um of this and so for i don't remember how it happened but he and i connected well enough to say hey let's do a conference call you know and uh, i'd love to ask you some questions all around related to lit rpg and he was very polite and uh, so we set the time up we call and he makes a comment somewhere he had made a comment before uh, online where he talked about how he was still writing while doing his night job and I'm thinking to myself, night job, you're freaking Alaron Kong. You're in the top whatever. When every time you bring a book out, I'm sure you're making some serious money. Why are you why are you doing a night job? And I'm in my mind, I'm thinking he's here as a night watchman, as a night watchman in a warehouse somewhere. And he's typing away, you know, and I'm just like, man, maybe I need to elevate his mindset of of where he may. may you know, this is what I'm thinking I, during the call. I find out he's a freaking doctor. And the night call is because he's taking the night watch as a doctor in, in the like, emergency room. Yeah, yeah. I'm just in triage, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's not even remotely. Never mind. That's that's different. <laughs> I made a misassumption. I, I shan't share that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So whoops. <laughs> but uh, so meeting people, yes, even as introverts, it's okay. It's okay. So getting the most from a conference, the uh, uh, but setting that goal before you go, because most uh, most people will get online, they'll sign up for every every uh, uh, session, and and we understand that you'll sign up for dinners, and then you'll find out at the end of the day of the sessions that you are burnt, burnt to high heaven, and uh, now you're starting to feel that anxiety. Oh my God, I have to go to dinner too, and it's okay not to go to dinner, it uh, because just because you signed up for it, it's okay. Uh, to go because somebody else will move into your spot at that dinner because they'll meet with somebody and they'll be like, hey, you're going to dinner. Come on and join us because it's uh, it's it's us getting together and you're, you're relating to somebody. So people will step in. People will step back. It's OK. Uh, do not put yourself in a position like uh, last year. I, uh, I signed up and, and went to a dinner that uh, it was I, I really wanted to be at six or six thirty. And it actually turned out to eight and it was late nine. I didn't get back to my room till after midnight and was back up at three. And I'm trying to run this show on, uh, on, on, I, I was completely on empty. So it, it, uh, uh, that made last year very, very tough. So I, I don't plan to leave Samstown this year because it's, uh, I, I mean, I owe you guys, you guys trusted me with your money, which I am spending faithfully to support this conference, but also to make sure that this show runs and you get the most out of it. I know, I know, I will. Uh, I'll meet with folks. I get to, I get to talk with everybody. I get to stand on a big stage at uh, when it opens, uh, and I'll also Michael uh, got over this year on the conference. I'll have you know, because Michael's always the first one to register, 
and uh, <laughs> and check the registration and payment system. So he actually has to pay too. And and I had the settings incorrect, so he only paid one twenty nine ninety nine for the main room because I had the setting from the previous year. I hadn't changed it over to one thirty nine ninety nine. So I'll get my I'm ten. Sure, bucks. that ten no. bucks. <laughs> Uh, like motherfucker, you're getting picked up from the airport in a limo. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I, I am. I, I, I am. But that's me, and I, I should get that. <laughs> so need time to recharge in their hotel rooms, which is what Craig was also talking about. Remember, you are entitled to recharge. So within yes. that concept, think about during these events, is there a time for you to just mark out and go, you know what? None of these appeal to me or none of these appeal enough. I need yes. some time to recharge. Just mark it as I'm in the hotel room and, and tell people, yeah, I'm going to, you know, whatever. I, I can add that on Sked. That's a really good idea, Mark, uh, uh, Michael. I, I will uh, put that as a separate session. Mm -hmm. Time in hotel room as a separate uh, location. Oh, but that's also, a good one. <laughs> but also we have uh, like virtual um, Independence Hall. So if you're not staying at Samstown, you can still go to Silver City is what it's labeled as, but we're going to retitle it to Independence Hall. It's right on the, the balcony overlooking the atrium. You'll be able to go there and and get in where it's supposed to be nice and quiet during the day. We'll make it loud later, but uh, nice during the day during when all the sessions are going, you'll be able to go in there, recharge, maybe recharge your, your laptop uh, if you're taking notes and, and things like that. It's a place to go and, and be quiet and, and, and jam some words, get online. Or, or just be separate from other human beings. And that'll be very, very important. This flows a little bit into the next point, which is, are you better at breakfast? Are you better at night? Are you better at coffee or wine? Know yourself and plan your energy and efforts accordingly to how you operate. You know, Craig has an event really early in the morning. I've got one really late at night. You know, if you know that, you know, you're a morning person, go to his. Your, the rest of your day is going to be so much more uh, capable. And because you didn't stay up late at night, you might get a chance to actually meet somebody instead of trying to stay awake in your, you know, your room or whatever. So just be aware of that type of stuff. That's, I know I'm a morning person. So signing up for anything after six is, uh, is problematic for me because it causes me physical pain to be awake after 8 PM at night. So uh, <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll try to avoid that. And, and most importantly for me, one thing one thing I didn't do uh, uh, in the previous years was as soon as the uh, final session was done for the day, I bolted. I bolted back to my room to hide because I was peopled out for the day. But what I need to do is I do need to walk around to go uh, walk through TGI Fridays and shake hands with people and just make sure everybody's uh, on track and and just say hi. Uh, and my parents uh, will be there as, uh, your mom? as they always are. My mom is iffy. My, my, my sister may drag her up uh, okay. against her will. She actually doesn't want to, she doesn't want to come, but, uh, but, your but dad. my dad, but my dad, <laughs> yes. And, and, uh, and also this is, this is one thing for, for everybody who comes to 20 books. Cause my, my sister works at the registration desk with Mickey and Kelly and Lynn and, uh, and she will be there pretty much all the time. So t look for Tammy. And then my dad will be hanging out at the registration desk too. He's 83 years old and the uh, uh, approval. I mean, everybody wants their parents approval. I really appreciate having my dad's approval. He's my, he's my biggest fan, but you guys make him feel like a rock star because you're like, Hey, we, you know, we, we appreciate that Craig runs his show. And that is, uh, that is overwhelmingly supportive for him. And that's why he loves, he will never not come to these shows. He oh, lives cool. in Phoenix. He drives up five or six hours uh, on. He's got coming up yeah, Monday least, morning this time, yeah. and uh, 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 he'll be there. And he loves the platitudes, and then he gets his picture taken with the women just to show his <laughs> fishing buddies, his eighty-year-old fishing buddies. Hey, look at this! I was at a conference, and, and I kid you not, he'll have a like a a, a brownie camera from nineteen forty-one, and uh, he'll be taking uh, pictures, getting people to take pictures of of him with. Uh, with uh, female authors because of his fishing buddies. Don't take it wrong. He's not a creepy old dude. He's not going to feel you up or anything, but that's just for <laughs> part of, part of the whole experience is uh, he gets those pictures and, uh, and says, Hey, look here. I was, I was somebody. <laughs> I, There's I am somebody. Yep. Yep. You guys make him feel special. He is the rock star at these shows. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we talked about the people, it's, you know, we, we have spoken about that ever since the first one. And I made a comment, I think 
then, you know, if you do anything, it's the meeting the people, the rest of it, the data. But honestly, though, there is a lot of information, a lot of good information. So I don't want to not highlight the fact that there's good reasons to go just from the content. I would caution, however, that unless you're a person who can just kind of listen and take it all in, perhaps maybe don't try to hit every single one of them for a few reasons, one of which is uh, recharging, great. But another one is overwhelming. Your sen overwhelming, And so you come out of it where you go, I've just been to 10 different seminars that were uh, really, I want to change all of these things and you do nothing. You know, because you get stuck in that situation of I could do this and I could do that. And I, it's like, no, just choose something. And so maybe kind of point yourself to the of what you need to know for the next six months. Yeah, a really good point, Michael. Uh, learn what you need to know when you need to know it. I know a lot of people signed up for the foreign rights uh, uh, session with uh, with Judith, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, uh, customer relationship ma management. The CRM. CRM is big for uh, corporations and things like that, where you have to manage those high level uh, contacts and customers. It, if if you have zero or one book, I I wouldn't go to the CRM because that's about hey, managing these high level contacts like. Uh, Michael's talking about, hey, I met this guy at Worldcon who is a major player in this industry. How do you manage that contact and, and not by blowing them off for 16 days, but in a in a better way? So, <laughs> and and this it's not it, it's not uh, about uh, handling your arc readers or anything else. So if you don't need to go, you're going to be uh, you, you're just going to it's going to be pie in the sky stuff. So please, please uh, go to the right sessions. <laughs> So the yeah. sessions that best that you're going to best get the most out of, and you can always watch videos of the other sessions. I know people are saying, "Well, I want to go to customer rights, uh, foreign rights, or customer relationship because those aren't recorded." Well, they aren't recorded because they're a candid conversation. When we're talking about customer high level customer contacts, we can't be recording that stuff to share. So, if, in case Judas says, "Well, I've got this contact from New York." Uh, publishers. Well, I want that content. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. It's going to be a con a, a candid conversation in a way that we're not going to record it. Same thing with foreign rights, because we're talking about agents and some other stuff that uh, that may, may not work. And, and it's a conversation between those people who are exploring foreign rights or who have gotten foreign rights and they haven't exactly worked like they wanted to. So it's not uh, if you're thinking about, gee, I'd really like to get into a foreign market. I think one thing Judah said is one company said, we aren't even going to look at you unless you have 10,000 copies of that book sold. And then we'll start talking about foreign rights. So it's a, uh, if you have no books published or one book published, this isn't going to be a session that you're going to get something out of. So just please, so, please. <laughs> so uh, speaking of those individuals, they're like, okay, so I have one book, two book, five books, whatever it is, but I, I really don't know how to go talk to people. So what you need to do is you need to find somebody who knows how to talk to people. That is their skill. That is their talent. That's what they love to do. So I was at dinner last night with a gentleman who gave me a birthday present. And um, he he's from a particular genre, which will become very, very evident right now. I don't know if you can see what this is. It's a cowboy hat. So... If you see a gentleman at 20 books, he's an older gentleman with a cowboy hat on, probably the only individual that will have a cowboy hat on. His name is Mike Bray. If you want to know how to find friends and influence people and talk to them and just do stuff, that is the man who seems to know everybody and has known them for years. So mm -hmm. I, I'm doing I'm telling him right now because I'm thinking it's going to be hilarious when Mike tells me about this later, about how many people came up and talked to him and said, how can I talk to people? What's the secret, Mike Bray, of talking to people? So cowboy hat. Talk to him. He's hilarious. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. And we'll be doing we'll be doing dinner with Mike in a, a couple weeks as well. Yes. <laughs> Ogo de chow, man. Brazilian. So that'll be uh, that'll be good. But that making the most from a conference, uh, Mike Bray, I met him at 20 books last year, 2018, I think was the first time. And he's like, oh, hey, mm -hmm. I, I, and he introduced himself as a matter of fact. He's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're making, you know, X amount each month. And I'm like, holy shit, how come I don't know you? Well, also, I'm nobody. So <laughs> <laughs> that's because uh, because <clears throat> Michael Anderley, I, I was there. I personally witnessed one where he introduced himself. I'm Michael Anderley. And somebody's like, yeah, so I don't know who you are. <laughs> it's like, no, no. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, absolutely. How, how do you, how do you, how do you overcome that? I, I suck at 
na names and faces. And I had a gentleman, and I don't want to mention his name because I'm more embarrassed. Uh, so he, he gave me his name last year. I'm like, great. And as I'm at all of these, I'm very helpful. I'm very on. I'm like, where do I know that name? Where do I know? <laughs> you know, and so it comes to me like two days later. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the major players in science fiction. How could yeah. I not have remembered his name? Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yeah, I was, I was, oh, and another one, I was there when, uh, when you walked up to Patrick Rothfuss <laughs> and he thought you were a creepy stalker and was going to get you banned. And I'm like, no, 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 that's Mike Landerly. And he's like, I don't. I yeah, no, 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 no. I'm like, no, man. He's that guy. He's that guy. He's, oh, he's, the stories. You wish, the story. you wish you, you wish you made his money, Patrick. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> Patrick, by the way, is just one of the nicest guys. He, um, he is, and he he is funny. He's uh, yes, yes. You and I were sitting here with our little bitty table, and his, you know, occasional fan, and then his, it, which is right in front of us. So we, yeah, it is all right. the way down. <laughs> And we're like trying to pimp his fans. Come on over while you're waiting. Come on over. Talk to us. We're, we're human beings too. No, they didn't really think so. So, <laughs> no, yeah, you all. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big you are. You're really tiny somewhere else. <laughs> it's, that's right. That's right. And that's an important point to note because, uh, uh, yeah, there are people who who bring fans, and then there are people who uh, who might not know who Patrick Rothfuss is. And yeah. uh, uh, he was hilarious because he's like. Before the fans came in, he's like, yeah, if anybody asks when's the next in the name of the wind or the name of the rose, I don't know which book says. He's like, yeah, I, I, I still don't have the good answer for that one. Because <laughs> yeah, never, never doesn't work. It's <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> so the next one down on my list is many introverts are highly curious and have a great love of learning. For every person you meet, tap into that character strength and think there's something interesting about everyone. What can I learn from this conversation? What can I give? <laughs> which is really important to us in 20 books. What am I curious about in terms of what makes this person tick? Ask interesting questions that tap into your, in your personal intrinsic love of learning. So what great, so what are some great questions to have ready? Craig? I, I think one of the most important things is, is having your genre on your badge. And this was a, a, a it, it's none of us are as smart as all of us. And so somebody brought that up in the 2017 like, oh, hey, maybe you should have genre on the badge, too. And I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. So we put that. And, and <laughs> that, that, gives your, that gives your leverage point of something to talk about that's not the yeah. weather or there's a, a, a something else you can talk about. Like, hey, the guy with the cowboy hat, have you learned how to talk to people with uh, from him? And yeah. you're talking to another person. And it's like, oh, yeah, I heard that now. And what this does as a business consultant, this was one of the things that I uh, coached senior leaders on. It isn't like me and Michael right here, I'm facing Michael, but what you see is we're side by side. So this is a way to talk. It's like, oh, hey, there's isn't that Mike Bray over there? And now you're shoulder to shoulder talking about something over there. It, it doesn't come across as confrontational or anxiety inducing. And you can have a conversation about something that's not where you're looking at each other, where you're like, it's uh, like a chess match. No. And you can have a conversation about, hey, I, I write romance. You write science fiction. What what kind of romance elements do you put in your sci-fi and maybe sci-fi romance? And you, you put it out there as, a, as an object between you and you talk about that object. You don't talk about each other. And this is a, a, a technique to have a conversation where it doesn't, where you're, where you cannot have to look somebody in the eye and just stare at them and say, Michael, man, look at you. So a couple of, so, so uh, here's one that I, <clears throat> I'm going to throw out there. Uh, what or certainly you start with, you know, what genres do you write? But if you could make all the money or awards or readers that you ever wanted, would you still write in this genre or would you try something else? So that was one that, that I had considered. And um, there's a way to get out of it if you're in the middle of something, which is if you need to go back and recharge and you're in a conversation, I have two concepts on this. If you're in a conversation, you don't have to talk. You're a part of, you're, you're part of the event. You're part of the conference. You're just part of the group. You don't have to say something. So don't feel obligated when you're just listening. You know, and, and someone, you know, if it's me, I'll probably, I try to get everyone involved and say, hey, let's, let's move back so we can get, you know, this circle a little bit bigger. But I've had people tell me, it's like, no, I just want to listen. I'm like, great, no problem. That's not an issue whatsoever. 
And then if you're going to recharge, if it's at the end of the day, you might say something like, you know, I'm gonna turn in, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Or if it's during the day, you can say, hey, I'm gonna go recharge and I can't wait to see you guys later. And then you excuse yourself and you move on. So that's a way to get back out of it. And you don't have to stick around for very long. You know, just in, do whatever you want, head back out. So those are a couple of things. And of course, what will success look like for you at the end of this conference, at the end of this event, at the end of this book fair? You know, when we went to Frankfurt uh, a few years, three years ago, two, two years ago, uh, when we went, we had no idea what Frankfurt was. One, I'd never been to the city. But beyond that, I didn't realize, of course, at the time, it is the world's largest book fair. It is massive. You know, millions of square feet of space that are going on across all these different buildings. There's no possibility and so for Judith and I, we wanted to go there. We wanted to try to learn a few uh, contacts, but almost as important, we just went there to understand it. It was, it was our, you know, in the military, you've got people, scouts. So it was our scouting event year one. So at the really big events, we're just going to scout. We're trying to understand so that we can make a plan for the following year. And that's important for us and how we do some of the large ones. You also met your, your German contacts for uh, we did. We, yes. we met uh, for the first time our German LMBP and German uh, Jens um, met him there, but also met some German fans in Frankfurt that first year and people getting together. So there were there were things that occurred. Um, it was interesting because for for Judith, she uh, does all the planning for the travel and the hotels, and thank God she does because we'd be probably in some podunk place miles away. But what she was most familiar with from her industry that she had come from before was that the hotel nearest the convention center was the most important hotel because that's where everyone in her industry did. Well, what we found out after we um, paid for this very expensive hotel is that's not where the people in Frankfurt hung out because it's one of the most expensive hotels. And so they actually, they're, they're just a very short cab ride away or a longer walk uh, in this really nice area of Frankfurt where you can get out and go to the patio cafes. And so this following year, last year, that's where we went. We had a great time. So just saying Frankfurt, it's not the one that's the closest. <laughs> just that way. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Well, same thing with the London book fair. I mean, uh, uh, I, I have my reservations at the Hilton Olympia because I heard that's the place to be. Uh, and I heard it from the maestro herself, Judith. Okay. Said, this is where. So. All right. Well, at least there will be one important person, Judith. <laughs> there, Judith will be there. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> but uh, uh, learning, learning about the conferences, uh, studying and being ready for them is important. But then understand that plans will change. Uh, I know one thing that a lot of folks uh, like is I have my plan, I need to stick with my plan. The plans will change, especially if you you vision. A visioning exercise that I did as a business consultant was at the end of this conference, for you to say this was wildly successful because I did X. So you write that before you go and then you make it happen during the show. It's not, mm -hmm. I went to 40 sessions. You're, you're going to get nothing out of going to every single session on every every uh, single time slot. You're, you're going to not get as much as you want to because you're going to have to go back and listen to them. Make sure that the sessions you really want to hear from, if you want to hear from John Truby about uh, uh, writing a story, writing a compelling story, how do you uh, go to his session, follow up, ask him questions if you see him later. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right? Right now, I think there's only like 250 people signed up for his session. He's in Samstown Live, so it, it's it's going to look empty. It's going to look like there's uh, one person in every four chairs, which is about right at present. So go go see him. Sit up close so you can hear and talk to him. Yeah, this Afterwards. is a man who has a lot of experience, both the book, you know, artist storyteller, whatever, but also screen. If you're interested in anything to do with with Hollywood. And, yeah. um, you know, this is the man that you're going to want to talk to. So maybe that's your one thing is go to his event and then afterwards go and meet him yeah. because it was really interesting. I didn't happen to know who he was at the first event that he came to. He was brought there by L. Lee Clark. And it just so happens that Stephen Campbell, the operations guy here at LMBPN, it's like, you know, he's uh, I mentioned some comment about John Truby and Steve's eyes light up. He's like, John Truby is here and he's looking around furiously. And I'm like, A, 
So now who's John Truby? I want to know who's John Truby because he obviously knows that John is somebody. <laughs> and so it was kind of interesting what was going on there. Which is exactly what Michael did to me <laughs> at the 20 books, Woodland Hills, not quite Burbank, definitely not LA, unless you want to argue about it, then yeah, it's LA too. <laughs> Con, uh, luncheon. <clears throat> it, a rather cumbersome name, but I learned everything I need to know about naming books from Chuck Tingle. So <laughs> the... Uh, uh, he's like, oh, hey, uh, John Truby will be contacting you. He's looking for a seat at the conference. I'm like, we're sold out. He's like, okay. And so John Truby contacts me, and I'm like, we're sold out. And and that was it. That was my reply to him. And he's like, well, uh, uh, Michael said, and I'm like, oh, name dropper. John Truby not dropping Michael Anderley's name. Yeah, sure, buddy. And, and, and I'm like, hey, Michael, did you say? And he's like, you have to check this guy out. Search him on Google. I'm like, okay. So I search him. I'm like, holy shit. Hey, John, we'd love to have you at the show. And actually, I, I, I'm willing to pay for your conference fee because, you know, I, I didn't want to say that. Yeah, maybe. John, I, like I, Truby. I, I, you're John Truby. <clears throat> so anyway, and, and we did get Terry Tatchell as well. Uh, and she wrote a couple uh, big screen screenplays as well as has been in Hollywood Very a long nice. time. So, so we've got a couple all-star players because ter why did ter Terry want to come? Because the writing on the wall says self-publishing, and she's like, I, I want to write books now, and, and I see that self-publishing, when I asked people I knew, this is a person who lives and works in Hollywood, they said 20 books, you got to go. Uh, oh, nice. And I'm like, holy shit, somebody in, in, in Hollywood, if you want to make real money as a writer, you need to uh, self-publish, and this group is the best one to uh, learn, learn the tricks, the tricks of the trade. Very nice. Yeah, that's I'm I am excited about the event. Other conferences. So and I, I push this and I have no idea if even one person is listening to me on this. But since these are going to be live streamed, you know, consider doing some event in your local hometown, even if it's with five of you. It could be in your, you know, a, a YouTube hooked up to your television and you order Pizza Hut or Domino's. Or, you know, we're, we're very agnostic on which pizza company it could be. Unless someone wants to sponsor, in which case, then then we'd be willing. Uh, but this is not at the event. This is the other stuff. Anyway, or a restaurant, if you can get enough people to show up at the restaurant. And you know what? That works really well because then, you you know, everyone pays and they clean up afterwards, which is fantastic. Yeah. And well, so and as, as part of that, we actually have a, uh, a watch party handout that Jen Mitchell is putting together. I've seen the first shot of it, and it is... Uh, really impressive. We've got a lot of uh, stuff on there. It's six, eight pages of how to plan a watch party. Oh, nice. Uh, we'll have some additional information that uh, I'm, I'm holding out on, like the final schedule for uh, the conference as I'm shifting rooms around <laughs> to make sure. Over, aren't you? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I don't have anything in the morning. You're, you're okay. <laughs> uh, and Judith, I put only in the afternoon at, at her request. <laughs> But the, but the watch party packet. So if you're thinking about, hey, there's three of us. We'd like to do a watch party, whether you do it at a home or a restaurant. Here's everything you need to know to help uh, help you plan that. Excellent. And with, so, you know, something that maybe we'll do, think of better next year is to reach out to a few cities. If we can see that there's enough people in a particular city, maybe we reach out to that those restaurants ahead of time and say, hey, we think that there could be as many as 30 or 40 people willing to come sit in your restaurant for two days and order food all day long. Do you think this is something you'd like care to do? Yeah. Do you so, have a back room? Do you have something? Are you a small business that, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you could shut down your restaurant for two days worth of revenue of, uh, of other, of a group watching live stream. Yeah. Yeah. That could be fun. So that's, um, another thing is earplugs. Um, introverts, there's a scale, right, of introvertedness. <laughs> and those that are really, really to, to the side, um, just going into a room that has a lot of action and activity is immediately overwhelming. So they not only need to go and recharge a lot, but they, you know, they don't necessarily want to feel left out either way. So they will try to, you know, sit on the far sides. So what um, I, I didn't really realize this and think of it until I was doing research for this right now, but earplugs are a really good event to help just kind of reduce that background noise down to maybe a more manageable level to allow them to interact better. And so what I'm going to do is either we're going to buy a bunch of um, earplugs, but I'm going to try to get some with some branding so I can write that stuff off. That would be really fantastic. Um, so we'll try to get some. Uh, I'll talk to Judith when, when she wakes up and, you know, see if we can get, I don't know how many hundreds of pairs that we might need because, you know, not everybody, you know, once again, 
only 95% of authors are introverts. That, that statistic is probably going to get quoted somewhere. Like that was a total guess, people. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, so however <laughs> many we need, maybe three to 500. And um, I'll get them and, and we'll have them for people to be able to plug in their ears and, and help. Maybe that will help soften the blow for some people. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? I, I pulled up earplugs on four imprint and it'd be like $3 a pair in a, no, uh, you're getting the wrong ones. They're, no, they're, no, this is with a packet. It's like almost what you get in business class. It's got all of the, the Oh, stuff. all the different stuff that goes with it. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, it should cost want, me less than a buck a piece. You know, you, you want like a thousand pairs for a hundred bucks, kind of. Uh, <laughs> no, I, there are none of those. I found none of those. The cheapest I and found. Then, and then you, you get the get the regular foamies and then just put a big sticker on it, provided courtesy of LMBPN. <laughs> well, what we're gonna do is we'll have one of those things that goes up and down, and then the box will be in front, and it'll just be a bunch of you know raw ones or something <laughs> yeah. by the by the bushel. Two thousand clunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no return. Just saying, yeah, no. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see yeah. about doing that because I do think that's a really good idea. One way to be able to just, you know, bring headphones, bring the noise canceling headphones if you have them, you know, pop some, some, you know, not these, the, the canned headphones. I don't know where they're at, but, you know, maybe we have something that you, that if you have headphones on, you know, people won't generally bother you because sometimes you just want, you want to be around people, but you don't want to talk to people. Yeah, I get that. I, I like that as well. And so headphones are a great way to kind of let people know you've zoned out and maybe you need some space or something. And then occasionally people just come up and knock on the table anyway. <laughs> the uh, which which for me, I won't wear my my hearing aids in Vegas. Uh, I've been working on wearing them uh, more lately and I find out that uh, there's way too much input. It's uh, like getting overwhelmed, going outside on a walk with Phyllis, every crunch on the rocks and stuff like that as I'm walking down the, down the road. So uh, I, I actually, that's how I tune out is I don't wear the earplug. So also if, uh, if you're talking to me and I look like I can't hear, understand you or I don't, it's because I can't hear you. So uh, uh, it's, I have the high tone. I can't hear anything up to like 5,000 Hertz. So men's voices, no problem. Women's voices, problem, un unless they're loud. So, so everyone is, heard yell at Craig. Yeah, except in the bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom <laughs> is, is our sacred place. <laughs> but um, so those are some of the different things. It's certainly the people. The knowledge is great. Being around the energy is fantastic. Whenever you're deciding conferences that you want to be at, some conferences do skew less activity. You know, we the Edinburgh one, I, I got kicked out of a room by Martha Carr, I think. Um, and others. <laughs> so we went into, I don't know, was she handling the science fiction and fantasy? I don't remember, but there was a lot of people in there. And I didn't realize this until two thirds of the way of my, my moment in time in there that I had just drank two Cokes. So I go into this place and, uh, this is in Edinburgh and, it, and, uh, I'm loud and it's supposed to be quiet. It's supposed to be like a library. And I'm like, what the hell y'all talking? And, and then Martha is giving me shit. And I'm like, I cannot believe this woman is giving me shit. And so I'm like, she's loud, so I'm going to be loud. So at one point, she said something. So I get up my phone and I put it on uh, ACDC. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know, like, I'll, it, so anyway, uh, it, just to say that too much sugar causes me to react a different way, perhaps, maybe. We dun. will, uh, uh, so. One of, one of the challenges with conferences is is food, because there are people with a lot of different allergies. So make sure you control your diet uh, so you aren't, hey, everybody's eating these uh, cookies as big as your face and uh, you're diabetic. Do not put yourself into that position where you're stuffing uh, too many cookies down your face and, and it's not good for you like like me. So uh, uh, try to eat halfway here, ha half a cookie um, <clears throat> or other meals. Uh, I know when I go to Vegas, I have a tendency to overindulge, and that makes me feel horrible. So uh, uh, just be be aware, take care, because your physical well-being, you are going to get drained, and it's okay because it's a good draining, especially because of the energy. You're going to go back to your room at the end of the day or get up the next morning. You're going to want to want to write some words, and that is cool that you're so energized about, man, I look at this book. Okay, hey, there's, there's hope, uh, and that's probably the biggest thing that uh, – uh, 
uh, 20 books, 50K, self-publishing formula, uh, my, Mark Dawson's group is, is the hope. Look at people who are, who are making a living at this and year in, year out. Uh, now that we've got a few years under our belts, uh, those are the folks. What are they doing? What are they doing differently? Yes, they work hard. Every single person who's making good money works hard, but they're working hard at the right things. And what are those right things? What can be the right things for you? So just see the hope, see the potential, build your steps of success. And that's one thing you can do at a conference. It's like, I didn't even think of that. Let me go. Let me look at this part of Amazon advertising in order to help me better refine my ads, hit that target audience, as well as this promotion that I heard about and, and, and build your readership. Because the whole thing, uh, the readers, the readers are the final arbiter of your success. But we, as all indie authors, we're all looking for readers. There are so many readers out there. It's not, not like, uh, hey, uh, you can't have my readers. Uh, yeah. They can read more than we, we write. So it's it's okay. Because if you get a reader who likes reading, they're, uh, and especially if you convert a gamer or a, uh, a, a TV watcher into a reader, then everybody wins. The whole, uh, the pool, the tide rises, right? Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned Mark and Mark and SPS have SPF Live now that's they've been building and they sold out and they're looking for larger venues. I don't know the status of the larger venue. Do you? Yes. Yes. They have a 900 person venue and they have sold 600 tickets through the first and second rounds. So okay. uh, perfect. They, they have 300 tickets left over and it's going to be a little bit of a tube ride from where we're staying, but they will we'll take the adventure together. Yeah. So my, my point for that, though, is that's the London Book Bear. And I've been to the four majors. I've been to the four majors except for London twice now. New York, unfortunately, is very anti-indie. That's the the extent. It's great for audio. If you want to go for the audio stuff, that that is fantastic. But from an indie perspective, the actual book expo to date for the two that I've been to, um, they were not well. It, it, as much as they, you know, they kind of put Amazon back in the far corner. And Amazon, for an indie, is one of the core companies that we engage with. So when they treat Amazon this way, no mas. Um, you know, I've seen some of the other different people. Um, Glenn Stewart and his company was there, one of them. We had a great time talking to them, but I don't know that they would do it again. You know, so we have to figure out what is New York doing? So at the moment, London is the indie uh, event for any of the four majors. Frankfurt uh, has some stuff, but it is so damn big. I wouldn't suggest starting that one. So Mark is is starting um, the London Book Fair with his event, which is great for indies. But even inside, there's this great area. It's upstairs in the back, you know, this indie area that they cut off, cut around. But it's almost like a little club. Well, it's like a really big club, quite frankly. And so you can go over there and recharge the indie and then go out into the floor to understand what it is on the more trad pub side and then go back up there to be the indie side. And so I, I, I just feel that London is probably right now, from my experience, the best of the four majors to go to for your first time. That's cool. That'll be my first book fair. So uh, I look forward to it in, in 2020. Absolutely. So I'm good. I think we're we're done here. I think we hit those kinds of things. Um, as far as work within yourself, uh, I would try to save up to go to a show instead of hey pitch a uh, pitch and get a get a loan to go to a show uh, mm -hmm. as part of your business. A and uh, that's one thing why we are hard over on trying to first keeping the 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 conference in Vegas for us because of cost. It's a lot cheaper to stay in Vegas and a lot cheaper to run a conference in Vegas. And then also the availability of cheap flights to Vegas. Uh, food is inexpensive. Uh, you can, we really wanted to keep it less than a thousand dollars. And this is uh, the potential career. Uh, are, if you are investing in your career and you only have to spend a thousand dollars, can you do that? And the answer is yes. And then also you don't even need to and get the, uh, the the 50% solution, which is you can watch the presentations online. We'll have the PDFs. All of the presentations will be live streamed. They'll be available as videos on uh, the Facebook group in oh, perpetuity. The <laughs> and then also they'll go to YouTube later, which then anybody, even non-20 bookers can watch them there. And that's just, uh, hey, that's just the cost we have to pay uh, to to share the information as widely as possible. So uh, even non-20 bookers, yes, they will get the 20 books uh, information. No, we're not going to charge. 
because the people presenting that is their IP and it's their, some of them, it's their business, mm -hmm. uh, whether they have a follow on course or something like that, that you might, uh, might want to get into. Uh, I know Tammy Labreck on, uh, she's very uh, sharing with her knowledge on newsletters, but she also runs a, a course and gives other paid presentations. But she's just coming for us to, to give this and share and part of giving back. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Tammy. Thank you, everybody who, mm -hmm. who comes and shares what they know. But also you'll see them congregate and talk and meet because they're, they're different groups and different levels. And uh, I think we have we have over 100 six and seven figure authors. If you if you add them all together, I think it was like 112, 113. Damn. So a significant number of people. <clears throat> that's 10 10 percent of the show are making a living at uh at self -publishing. No, that's a good living let's let's clarify that that is a that's, really good that's, living that's a good living yeah yeah <laughs> who are making a good living at the, that's what they're doing they're not uh they're not working a day job this is their job so a rather rather healthy portion of uh they're not working a day they're not working for the man or the woman they're working for the man <laughs> <laughs> all right a man. different V capital T. Uh, yeah. V. So you're, the uh, you're... Uh, yeah, we didn't pimp any other conferences. That's really what we didn't we didn't want to uh, talk about. We did talk about some other. You have uh, some uh, professional, like I know Dean and Chris run their uh, absolutely uh, their workshop in October in Vegas. Uh, uh, Kevin J Anderson runs his the storytellers. It's it's more a workshop, even though it's a conference. It's still workshop in in nature mm -hmm. uh, uh, to make uh, 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 better writers not necessarily the uh, some it, other yeah. things that we do like how to sell books um, Amazon, yeah, it's Amazon. got some of those right but it, it still has a, a fair amount of how to write because you do yeah. have people who have been in the industry 10 20 I mean Kevin knows a whole lot of people and yeah. so he's able to pull some really big names that you know you read when you were a kid sometimes yeah. you know some of us might be a little older than that so, but I so think, you've got you know, you've got be there. The, so you've got the, uh, uh, and looking at your trade, I know RWA is huge. And if mm -hmm. you're a romance writer, you probably need to be part of RWA and the local chapters and things because they are so huge. And the, the resources that they provide, uh, definitely an opportunity. So your professional organizations that support you and the uh, uh, keeping your finger on the pulse. Uh, indies, indie authors are doing very, very well. An indie author that you've never heard of is probably making more than a trad pub author that you have. So this is this is a, a, a minor distinction based on how the royalties and who gets the lion's share of the profit from a book. So indies doing really well, right? We we are making what fifteen percent of what trad pub makes. They're still pulling in. I know Simon and Schuster was what four point two billion dollars yeah, in sales. something that i wanted to you're, you're right because i'd mentioned it earlier maybe we'll do it another one but just recognize if you're in the stock market you talk about whales right in the stock market these are the big groups that have billions or trillions of dollars and they where they go so goes the market and generally speaking and so we're the minnows are the ones who follow them so similarly this is trad pub just recognize that the trad pub are sitting there swimming in the ocean some of us who are doing well are swimming in the lake <laughs> and so, you know, we're, but some others, Indies are doing very well in the pond and they're very happy there. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to swim in the ocean in order to be happy and to be able to, you know, run a business and, and make some income and stuff. But um, just recognize that the biggest waves, just be aware of that. If, if that is your mindset of, of following what's going on in TradPub, like I have a Publishers Weekly uh, subscription and I read that. You know, I've got it both electronic and in paper because I do like taking the paper to, you know, when I go have breakfast and going through it. And so uh, Publishers Weekly will be there. And, you know, I would encourage you to get to know them. Yeah, Publishers Weekly. I, and, and that's another huge get for 20 Books Vegas. I I, uh, I really appreciate that they uh, are coming. <clears throat> Somebody posted, Superstars, one day that's craft and the rest is business. That's great. And that's probably part of the transition to uh, 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 to indie focused because uh, you got to have that business mind. Otherwise, uh, you can't just write. Uh, as I think we probably need to bring Kevin on one Saturday morning 
and okay. ask him because I mean, I'm, I would feel comfortable or I think, you know, I can't speak for the gentleman, but I would yeah. think that he'd be willing to come on and talk to us because I think he's got so much history and knowledge of what's going on in a, a completely different mindset to yeah. allow some of us to just say, oh, I hadn't considered it that way. And so I'd love to have Kevin come on. Okay, we can do that, Kevin, as well as uh, maybe Dean Wesley Smith, same, mm -hmm. same, uh, knows a lot of people. Those folks we have been in the industry a long Chris, time. Chris. Yeah, and we're back in Chris as well. The, they have been in the industry a long time. All of this has happened before, as you might have heard from uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica. All of it will happen again. The things that TradPub went through, that they dealt with, that they then knew things came up, Indies are dealing with those same things. Uh, it goes down, goes up, and what are those? And how can you uh, just be more aware of the trends and when things, uh, when circumstances change and you need to change? I know as Indies, we can change a hell of a lot more quickly than TradPub because TradPub is signing a contract for, for two or three years down the road. We can adjust next month if we want to. Well, have to, quite frankly. I've told that to a few people this last couple of weeks. It's like, folks, I told one, I could tell you this in six months when you're ready to actually implement it, it probably will have changed. So let's talk when you're ready for it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, one of the final things that you can get at a conference is, is uh, collaborations, co-authoring, uh, a mentor, a uh, somebody to write with, uh, whether it's uh, sprinting. Um, mm -hmm. All these things are possible. And they start with when you look at that badge and it says the exact same genre as your badge. And you're like, oh, hey, man, you're right. You're right. Oh, you're you're that person. Because uh, there are people who will have a name on the badge, but they might have three or four pen names and you just know one and not the others. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I also write under. And you'd be like, cool, I, I met you. I read your stuff. Uh, and uh, and they might have read your stuff and you find that, hey, we got a lot in common. Let's uh, let's write a book. Uh, let's do something different. I'd so share, all, you know, let me pimp you. Let me send an email out on behalf for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let, let, me, let me, I was talking about. Yeah. Let me share your next uh, release. Uh, I'd be happy to send it to my newsletter because I know my readers like your stuff. Mm -hmm. all, all those kinds of things. And, uh, and, uh, whether they, whether they, uh, uh, then share yours or not, that's up to them. No, no quid pro quo, just uh, go meet people and you'll find you have a lot in common. Uh, we're going to have a thousand people from probably 1500 different genres. So uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> find, find somebody, uh, somebody you like, somebody uh, who's like you. And I think you're, uh, uh, I know we have a lot of collaborations from both 2017 and 2018 that happened. Books have been published. People have realized higher levels of success. People are climbing that ladder of success and, uh, and, and getting higher and higher up the mountain. Yeah, absolutely. All right, folks, I got to cut Craig down. He'll just keep chatting. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, we've gone on a little longer than an hour. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I can talk about the conference forever. But yes. uh, we're set. Actually, 20 Books Adelaide, we have all of the swag in already. So life is good. We've got, we have, uh, I think of, we have our last tickets. couple speaker guests, uh, uh, speaker gifts for 20 Books Vegas uh, to, to arrive. But otherwise, we've got all of that stuff. It's in Henderson, <laughs> Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> My effort to shut Craig down, wholly inadequate. <laughs> all, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of good stuff going on, but just plan your year ahead. Usually like uh, 20 books, Vegas, we sell out early, uh, SPS show. There's uh, uh, tickets available for, so if you're in the UK, get one, get yourself to London on March 9th. All right, people. Peace. Bye.